And these people were the ones that uh, were known as the uh, Napahi. And that would be probably the best word in English today would be the warriors. Not everyone can be a, a warrior. <laughs> In the uh, traditional teachings of our people, we are told about the ways that our old people were organized into um, clan families and clan groups. And at one time there were at least 147 different clans, clan families that came together and became what was known as the Dene Nation. Everything that was done was always based on family. Family was number one thing as far as, uh, as a group went. And then loyalty. Loyalty to the family was very important. And so the uh, various times when you had to protect yourselves against other people from outside of the, uh, what was the Neh. And these people were the ones that uh, were known as the, uh, the protectors, or Ndapahi is uh, the way they used to uh, refer to them, Ndapahi. And that would be probably the best word in English today would be the warriors. These people that are known as uh, Napahi or Hachah Napahi were people that actually volunteered and they knew the dangers of being in a place where they might be uh, injured or even lose their lives. Napahi was made up of people that uh, volunteered to do what they had to do to protect their families, to protect their clan, and to protect all of the other clan families of Dene. And so the teaching was that uh, not everyone can be a warrior. Is what they used to say. And since our Dene have been involved in uh, uh, world wars and other wars and that, they um, volunteered. And I think that the greatest example of that is when they World War II occurred. And our people showed up by the hundreds at recruiting depots. And uh, they came with their bow and arrows and they came with their uh, rabbit hunting rifles, and they were ready to volunteer. Most people are familiar with the code talkers, and it is that they, they are true warriors, and they volunteered uh, to do what they had to do. The warrior concept among our people, the Dene, is that uh, the ones that are willing to do all of that is necessary to protect what they recognize as their families and their loved ones and their people and their lands. The Code Talkers had a name for the United States. It was Nikama. And to this day, we re still recognize, you know, the whole of uh, the United States as our mother. The women among our people, they, at a very early age, receive a warrior name. And uh, these warrior names are actually given to the women because they will be at war in their homes, protecting the people from hunger and from thirst and from all the, the different things that can uh, put a family in jeopardy. And so they are the ones that are given the, uh, the bunch of ar arrows, you might say, which is recognized as the stirring sticks. And they are the ones that uh, protect the home in a physical setting. All of the uh, temporal responsibilities of caring for the home and protecting the home is given to the woman. While on the other hand, all of the spiritual necessities in that are re the responsibility of the man. And so it is when a man is a warrior and uh, he is in a position to where he takes life when it is necessary. That has to be done on a spiritual level rather than such a physical setting as many times uh, people think that that's all it is. With the native people, it was a spiritual thing, and it's uh, something that has to be recognized in that way. The teachings of the Neh, as far as warriors go, it is still very much something that is admired. I always honor anybody that uh, participates in the military as a serviceman or woman. I honor them, I appreciate them, and uh, I know that we have uh, always lost people that never made it home, and it is that they, these people are warriors that did what they had to do that nobody else was willing to do. So it is that you have to be willing 
And so it is a volunteer thing. The uh, idea of uh, when you're in a combat situation in traditional teachings and you happen to take life, it is that you are taking the spirit of the person from their body and sending it into the next world. And so that is the uh, spiritual understanding of what a person does. And so the uh, ceremonies that are conducted for our servicemen and women when they come back from uh, serving in the military, it's uh, da is what they call it. And it's uh, sometimes we call it the enemy way. And, but there are some other things in that in, in the ceremony itself that are very important to have performed. But the teachings of our people are always that uh, this is a spiritual setting and uh, it is that uh, people have to prepare themselves in a spiritual way when they volunteer to do something that is to pot potentially of taking life. And so those are the things that we are told. Yeah.